Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to look at geotropism. This is the follow on lesson from phototropism. I have linked the phototropic video above, so I suggest you go and watch that one first before you watch this one. So that makes a little bit more sense when you see them together. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed because I post new video content every Tuesday and Thursday for grades 10 to 12 life sciences. And if you are in matric and you are thinking about getting a distinction at the end of the year, you should think about joining my YouTube membership. There are so many perks in there, like live lessons, extra video content in terms of preparing you for exams. And most importantly, you get access to my cheat sheet study guide, which is one of the most exclusive perks. Or you can buy my study guide on my website, which is missangler.co.za. So let's get into the video. Um, geotropism is a follow on from what we've done and geo is referring to, you know, like the ground, land and gravity and tropism is referring to the movement caused by it. Now, what we know already is that plants come in two basic sections. We know that there is a shoot, which is pretty much everything above ground and everything below is the root. Now, shoots are negatively uh, geotropic, which means they grow away from gravity and they don't want to be near it. That's why they grow up and away. Whereas roots are positively geotropic and so they are attracted to it. And a great way to illustrate this is if we turn a pot plant sideways, as you can see in the picture alongside here, you'll notice that even though we're growing it sideways, the stem still grows up and then out and away from gravity. And the roots bend down and curve towards gravity as well. Imagining if this was the table that you had rested the pot plant on. Now, what's governing this is geotropism. An important note I want to make now is geotropism works uh, in the opposite to phototropism when it comes to auxins. You'll see now what I mean by that when I explain how it actually works. Now let's go into how does this actually work. And I just want to recap what happens in the stem and the root because they are different and we need to build upon what we've learned in phototropism. So I'm going to start with the stem. Now the stem has auxins in it, the hormone, but it responds differently to what happens in the root. We know in the stem, auxins stimulate cell growth, which means that we take a regular sized cell and over time it elongates, which literally means it gets longer. Um, and therefore, you know, bigger. Now, it's important to know that in the stem, auxins um, are always going to collect um, on the side that creates cell elongation. And we see that here in this picture, because you can see if there is a zoomed up little image over here, the cells on the side where the auxins are collecting is where uh, cell elongation takes place. And we also saw this in the stem with phototropism and light. The auxins collect on the dark side, they create cell elongation, and then the stem leans or bends towards the light. So the rule for the stem is the side that the auxins collect on, they stimulate growth for the stem, okay? Only for the stem. In this instance, because this plant is lying down, they say that it collects on the lower side, which is true because auxins will sink down because of gravity. And what it causes then is the plant to turn up towards the light. As we can see here, it's making a very sharp turn upwards. In the root, however, auxins have the opposite effect. Number one, auxins in the root inhibit cell growth, which means it stops cell growth. Literally, that means if a cell began as a square, it will stay a square. It doesn't elongate. It doesn't get bigger over time. That's what it means. Because it doesn't elongate, it's going to then cause the auxins to sink to the bottom, as we can see in this picture. They sank to the bottom on the stem as well, except in the stem, it stimulates growth. In the root, it inhibits growth. So they sink to the bottom because, remember, auxins are attracted to gravity, so they'll sink towards the bottom. And in doing so, they stop the growth on the underside, or in this case, the lower cell layer, but you'll see how on the top layer of the root, it continues to elongate. Look how long the cells are. 
And that then means that bending or turning down away from the light or towards the gravity happens, as you can see in the picture here. We can see the roots going down. A nice easy way to explain this, and I've planned it out for you really easy, of how you can explain this in an exam or test, is you must mention four things. Okay, So when you are explaining geotropism or or for that matter, phototropism, you can use this as well. You need to explain, the first thing is, what is the auxin doing? Is it inhibiting or is it stimulating? Okay. The second thing is, what is happening on the lower side? In other words, the lower side towards gravity. You could substitute that in for what happens on the dark side of the plant for phototropism and what happens on the light side. My one here is just for geotropism, where we say what happens on the lower side of the of the root, what happens on the upper side of the root. Then you say, what is the result? Is it going to bend up or is it going to bend down? And so your focus must always be what are the auxins doing? And these pictures, these two little like zoomed in images are perfect for what I'm trying to explain or get you to explain in an exam. You have to say what's happening on the underlayer. So this is the under layer, and you need to say what's happening on the upper layer. You'll notice that they're different in the stem and the root. They respond differently to gravity. And the same can be said for um, roots and stems with light in phototropism as well. You can use the same outline answer and how to explain it. The next important step is to look at examples of possible exam questions. I like to do this because it's very abstract if I just teach you geotropism, but I don't really show you how they possibly could ask this. And they generally ask these questions as investigative ones. Now, I always tell my students when they do geotropism and phototropism to look out for key pieces of equipment because that'll tell you what we're testing. If there is light involved, whether it be light coming from one direction, coming from all around, you need to know that we're doing phototropism. But when you start to see something called a clinostat, and I'm going to just bring your attention to the picture on the left-hand side here where it says clinostat, I want you to know that it is often associated with geotropism, and I'll explain now why soon. A clinostat, as you can see in the picture here, it's like a device that rotates. And at the end over here, we have a plant that is attached to the clinostat. And the clinostat's like a rotating platform. So it slowly rotates. And what they've done is they've attached a pot plant sideways to it. And if you rotate the clinostat, in other words, you make it go round and round and round and round, as we can see here, the plant will continue to grow straight. And the reason for that is when it rotates, the auxins are evenly distributed. And because they're not sinking down anywhere, as we just learned now, the cells won't elongate um, unevenly, so they'll continue to grow straight. However, if you put a pot plant just on its side, like the second picture over here with no clinostat, you see that the stem bends up and away from the ground. And that's because stems are negatively geotropic. They're moving away from um, gravity. And so what you have here is two different experiments. And if the clinostat were to stop rotating, this would be the before when it was rotating, and this would be the after, when it stopped rotating. And that's because it lets the auxins sink down to the bottom of the stem, which then stimulates the auxins in the stem and makes it grow upwards. The other way that they like to ask this is when we compare it in the roots. Now, the roots are a very different situation because they are positively geotropic, but they, remember, are inhibited by auxins, which, if you remember, means that there's no cell elongation. Um, and what happens is their roots then bend downwards instead of up. And what they do is they normally set up like a Petri dish like this on its side. And they've got three seeds here with a little root growing out of them. You'll notice that the roots all uh, start straight in whatever direction they're growing, whether they're growing up, down, or to the side, they're growing straight, right? But if you leave this uh, in its position, as is the Petri dish on its side, you will notice in the after, the roots 
grow downwards. They curve downwards. This one that was going sideways goes down. This one that was going up now curls around and wants to go down. And this guy over here, he's already going down, so he's going to keep going that way. But what's interesting is if I took this same Petri dish, this one over here, or if I started off with this one, actually, let's start off with this one rather. Let's start off with that one. If I took the before one and I put it on a clinostat, in other words, I took this Petri dish and I stuck it on the Petri dish sideways and it rotated, the uh, roots would continue to grow straight. Why? Because the auxins are evenly distributed. When the clinostat is not rotating, or if it's still, like in the second picture where the petri dish is still, they're not evenly distributed, and they collect on the underside, and that causes bending. So those are two ways when we talk about clinostats. Another way that a clinostat, and I'm just going to mention this, even though this is not a phototropism, I want to mention it. This is a plant on um, a... Uh, uh, clinostat. So this is the clinostat at the bottom here. You can see that they've placed it on there. And the curvature of each of these plants tells us whether or not the clinostat was rotating. So let me give you a perfect example. This central one was rotating permanently. How do I know that? Well, this plant has been put inside of a box with a hole. And so the sunlight has been coming in from this direction. Now, if the sun comes from that direction only, you would think it should bend over, but this one's not bending. That's because the clinostat is rotating, which means the auxins are evenly distributed, so it grows straight. However, if we look to the right-hand side picture, sunlight still coming from this direction, you'll see that it is bending over. Now, did it rotate is the question. Is that one rotating? So C is not rotating. This clinostat is still but what about A? A looks like the stem is bendy. You see how it goes from the left and to the right and from the left and to the right. So what happened here? Well, what happened here was every time the plant leaned into the light, we rotated it slightly away from the light. So it then bent over a little bit more towards the light, and then we rotated it. And then it bent over back the opposite way again, and so it made this sort of windy, bendy shape. So if I draw it for you again, towards the light, we rotated it, so now it's on the other side, then it goes back towards the light, then we rotate it, and now it's back this side, then it grows towards the light, and so on and so on as it goes. And that's why we got it so bendy. So that's just like a little extra tip bit for you to use with phototropism and a clinostat. Now, as always, I like to end off my sections with a terminology recap. There was a lot of terms in this section, and that's because the majority of the section is application. You really have to practice application questions. The best thing to do, everybody, is to do past paper exam questions on this topic. And I've got a few of these in my exam paper uh, playlist that you should go and watch where I walk you through how to answer them. Now, looking at geotropism, remember that's the way in which plants respond to gravity. Stems and shoots, they are negatively geotropic, so they grow away from gravity, whereas uh, roots are positively geotropic and they grow towards the gravity. We then looked at the auxin, which is the hormone that's responsible for plant growth. Remember, auxins in the stem um, stimulate the growth, whereas auxins in the root inhibit the growth. And because of this difference, it causes bending, either up towards the sunlight or down towards the ground. And that whole growing is called cell elongation, which is when cells elongate, they get longer and bigger. And that's what ultimately creates the bend where the top layer of cells bend and the bottom layer of cells don't, or the top layer elongates and the bottom doesn't elongate and vice versa. The bottom elongates and the top doesn't. Just remember, it's different in the shoot and the stem. And lastly, we looked at a common piece of equipment in a lab called a clinostat, which is a rotating uh, stage or disc that you can put things on top of it. And we use it to evenly distribute auxins. That's its purpose. Now, if you uh, enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. Your notifications are turned on. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.